So, one of the biggest downsides to always salvaging stuff is storing it and organizing it. And so, down here at the cave, I'm going to put some pallet racking up out here so we can put stuff like tires, materials, buckets, attachments on it and keep it organized and yet easily accessible always on pallets. So that's what we're going to work on. Going to get these put up and yeah, it's going to help a lot. Perfect. So what we're doing is basically we're digging down, we're putting a concrete block basically as a footing. It's not going to be sitting in concrete, I'm not going to mount it. It'll have its rigidity from the other pieces attached to it. And so at least it gives it something off of the dirt, trying to try and keep some of the moisture away from the metal. It's going to be sitting outside, eventually it's going to rust and rot. It doesn't really matter to me. For the time period that I'm going to use it, it's going to work perfect. <laughs> Let's dig this corner down, just like maybe a half an inch, and we'll see how it looks. Look. So I didn't have enough orange uh, orange cross beams to do the whole thing, but I had some white ones laying around and they're kind of rusty, but they will be absolutely perfect for what we're doing here. Now I just got to figure out what to put on them. I don't want to put plywood because it's outside. So I'll need to find some wire mesh. I have some wire panels, but they're for smaller racks. So I don't know, figure it out. For now, it's up. Check out this new jack I got. It's an airbag jack. 
and this one's rated for 11,000 pounds. And we're going to use it here on these uh, pallet racks that weigh almost nothing. So you hook up the air here, and then you keep it closed on the red one, and then the, the green one, you just let air in. Up it goes. Oh yeah, we're bending that. <laughs> Huh. Maybe not the right jack for this. Maybe we just do it by hand. That jack is going to be really, really useful. Just not on that flimsy pallet racking that we've got here. So we did all that work the other day, putting this in, leveling it, etc. Only to have me change my mind and decide I wanted a gate here. Now, why did I do that? Well, the main reason is I kept walking through here and having to, like, you know, kind of go under there. And it was just a pain to have to walk all the way around and that we decided to use the air jack we're trying it again there's a you can try it on these these cross beams actually seem to work pretty good he's getting that under there yeah that's good that wouldn't go any more than that so this thing's pretty cool what you do to raise it is you pull the green one and it'll go up and you want to lower it you pull the red one and it'll go down and there's an emergency uh, blow-off valve there. This one's rated for five tons. It's quiet. It's got a couple of wheels on the front. Allows you to roll it. Yeah, I'm excited to have it. And it's quick, too. And a heck of a lot more stable than you would think. Now we're just digging down to get these footings here. I'm not going to make you watch us level all this again. We'll get it straight, level, perfectly in line with the building. And then we're going to put... One post right here in the corner. So what I'm doing here is I'm welding these plates onto the, the post for the gate so that I can mount it to the corner of the concrete and also put it in the ground, but this will give me a really, really sturdy mounting location for it. Got, basically I'm putting it right on the corner of the building, so I got these two on one on each side, and then those two up there on one on each side. And then this post is already used for a gate, so somebody already scabbed these uh, brackets on here. I'm gonna throw some more weld on those, make sure they're strong. And then we'll get it mounted. So the hinges are welded on, and then I added these uh, plates here. And I'm going to add an anchor here and here. And then on the two outside ones there. And then I'm going to add an an two anchors there and two anchors there. And on top of probably putting in four bags of concrete right there.
already rock solid with only one anchor in it. And we're putting seven more. And the concrete. This post ain't going anywhere. Many of you may be wondering why I didn't wet the concrete and put it in there dry. I've put in more fences than I can remember and in all the years doing it, I never ever put wet concrete in a post. Always dry. It, if you do it right, the dew in the ground and the moisture in the, in the ground will harden it over time. I'm not aiming for perfect, I'm just aiming for better than it was. So I had a little bit of uh, orange paint and I painted just the, the faces of these. I don't care that it, it's over the rust. I don't care that it's not perfect. I care that it looks better. And I went to go buy some more of that same paint. It's like a satin uh, fire orange or something and I could not find it. So I'm gonna keep my eyes out. I wanna do at least the faces of those three there. But the gate turned out awesome. So still gotta figure out how to attach it, but that's a small problem. The gate is in, be a nice ability to walk straight through here. A bunch of the materials and stuff I have piled here is gonna start getting organized on here. The big uh, metal rack over there I think it's going to go behind the machines on that side of the building. I like things organized and I like to take care of the property, so I don't want piles of junk everywhere. We're going to line the back of all these racks with steel to add a privacy screen from the businesses over there and the road over there. Ran out of panels last night. Went and got three more, and that should finish us off. They don't look like they're the same color, but whatever. I think these panels need to be uh, washed, but that looks a lot whiter than those are gonna be. I don't know. Let's just hope they're the same. Yeah, look at that. 
and that was nice. Now we're gonna put, uh, basically cover the gate. All right, there you have it. Got all the siding on, and we got the gate covered. Pull that open, and here's how I attached it. So basically two bolts, one on either side of a one chain link section, and so it can't lift up and it can't come down. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 sections, each with two bolts. If that panel comes off, I swear we probably have a tornado situation going on. So I'm not too worried about it, but I did add that many because of the fact that this is gonna become a sale. The wind is gonna hit this and pull really, really hard on it just as it comes through here. So the downfall to this setup is probably gonna be this latch here. So this is just a cheapo latch. I just bent it tighter. And then I had this post here that's literally just bolted there and there and it just grabs right around that so it's what i had for now if it doesn't work well or it ends up failing that's fine i'll figure something else out i'm not too worried about so it. one nice thing is that it pretty much wants to stop right there and so i'm glad that's the case i mean it's actually pretty windy out right now now i'm sure the wind could smack it all the way into that d3 i'm not too worried about it if i have to I'll probably put a pipe in the ground with a post that you can pull up and down and anchor. And then I'm also thinking about doing one in here so that it'll swing all the way in there and I can just leave it open and not worry about it coming flying out, you know, coming flying out and shutting or hitting somebody. So, but it works well. It's a nice big wide opening. I'd say it's probably 48 inches or more. Um, yeah it's looking awesome i love the way it looks nice finish to the yard on that side and then it gives nice area for parking other machines right here and then i want to completely clear off this whole back of the area move that tank get some of this stuff out of here make this usable space rather than just storage and there we have the inside Check out that beautiful sunset. It's a beautiful evening. And I'm starting to get everything all cleaned up back here. I'm trying to get all my piles picked up and organized. And this pallet rack is going to be a big part of that. So over here I've still got some tires. And then some of the big tires. I've got the fuel tanks that are gonna go on uh, some trucks. The buckets for the skid steer are gonna go on the pallet racking. Same with these tracks. I'm gonna put these tracks on a pallet. Starting to look good, starting to really shape up back here. And then over on the other side of the pallet racking wall, got the International cab over sitting next to the D3 and then the wheel loader forklift and the old AC 645 so I think I can get one more machine in this area so I'm gonna move these around shuffle them and I know I can get at least another truck on this corner if not a machine and then all of this area behind me will be changing as well as far as how I use it. But yeah, starting to really look good back here. Check out this rack I got. This is a solid steel rack for angle iron, pipe, whatever. It's supposed to roll around and it does, but it weighs too much right now. It has this handle that's technically rusted in place, but I don't really care. It's perfect for all this miscellaneous stuff. So I can move it with the wheel loader forklift. And we're going to set that probably back behind along the wall over there. That wall makes a huge difference. It's absolutely awesome. Looks great from the road. It's coming along. It's been a journey, this old building. Hey, there's lights kick on.
Right up there is the dust to lawn sensor. When it gets dark enough, the under soffit lights kick on both on the front and the back. All right, so it is finally time to put up gates to close in the back section of the cave here. I've got two 16 foot wide gates that are gonna start here and move all the way across. So we'll have basically 32 feet of opening. Originally, I started digging this out to, in, to reinforce it with additional concrete so that we could beef this up and use this post. But I just don't trust the post. So the plan is to support the fence in a couple ways and pull that post out and put a new one in. I need a different uh, blade, this thing's dull. You know what? I might be able to screw those out. I'm broke. I'm a dirty cut. Okay, so to support this bottom one, I screwed it in there. Now I'm gonna clamp it to this post that's mounted to this big chunk of concrete. It's only got to hold it enough until we get the fence up. That ain't going anywhere. All right, so I've got these shorter chunks of uh, pipe. We're gonna chop them up into smaller sections and uh, reinforce the concrete. What is it to there? I think it come down like 13 inches. The main post, it goes, basically it's gonna go down four feet and then we're going to have this huge footer around here, around it, full of concrete. So that should be plenty strong. And then we're going to install some chunks of pipe to reinforce this area. So yeah, I'm going to get that post in now. Tip it up. Straight up. 
light's getting tired. All right, we're in the middle of the hole. All right, so use this level to get it level in both planes, side to side, and then back and forth like this and like this. So we've got it pretty dang close. Just go back a touch, right about there. -ish. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Get the concrete in there. Take it down to the height of the collar. Actually, go to the bottom of the, of the collar. Okay. Do you need more bags for this side? Probably. That out. All right, work your way around, pack that. We got it all in. We're going to do this post tonight. We're going to let that set up. I need to get the hardware for the gate and I need to get the hardware for the latch. And then we'll know exactly where that next post needs to go. Because if I do it now, I could be off and I don't want to be off. So, plus it's getting late. We're going to get cleaned up and uh, take off. Okay, so last night we got that post in and I didn't really show you very well what the plan is here. So, I'm going to put a gate. It's gonna go right across this opening here. And it's actually those two gates right there. They're each 16 feet long, and they'll meet up right about here, and then go all the way over to this area. So, got the hole dug for the post. We're gonna put a big post in. This evening, it's gonna be after dark. We're gonna get the post up for this spot. So the plan is not to put the gates right on right away because of the fact that I want to let that post completely set up and harden, and same with this post over here once we get it in, due to the fact that I do not want to put stress on it too early. We're going to let it completely harden up, same with the post over there, 
and then we can get the gates hung and installed. Right now, what we need to know is how wide the opening is and exactly where that post is gonna go. We'll do that by laying out the gates and then the latches, which these gates have a couple of similar ones, will measure out how wide. There's some adjustment that you have both on the post and on the latch. And so there can be, I think it's like five or six inches of play, probably on each side, plus the opening in the middle can be as wide as, you know, five to eight inches wide, depending on how that latch comes in. And the latch is gonna be a similar type to this that basically it comes down, this is the one side of it, and it basically has two pieces of metal that go down in here and connect. So the potential for this post to handle two gates means we're putting more pipe in here and then we're going to add rebar around the deeper part of this hole. Give me that sludge. There. That will add a lot more strength. We are making sure to fill all of those pipes full of concrete. right at the bottom of that concrete pad. So normally, normally I do not put water on dry concrete when putting it on a post, but I want to speed up the process of this getting hard, so we're just going to pour some water right over the top. Let that soak in and we'll do another bucket. We're gonna leave it like that for tonight and uh, let it harden up.
Okay, so to be able to use these bulldog hinges, you need a collar at the bottom on the gate, and I don't have that. So that would ride here, and all of your weight on the bottom is literally being pushed on right here in this spot, but there's nothing for this to clamp onto. So plan is gonna be to take a piece of pipe that'll fit in the hole, like so. We'll run it up, I don't know, six inches, and we'll cut it to the length there, and then we'll take a piece of pipe that's bigger than it, but it's the same size as this, and we'll cut it only that long, right there, and I'll weld this little chunk to this longer chunk, and then the clamp will go over that. And then boom, we have the ability to have a hinge that can be taken off. And that little piece will just ride up in there. All the weight will just sit down on it. It should work. Something like that. Changed my mind a few times. Here's what we're going with. So this will go in here like that. And then I've got this little collar here, which will go all the way up. And it will literally go over a slight bit of metal that's there. So I'll weld that around there. I'll weld this collar onto this pipe here. And then this will go like that. And the reason for doing all this is so that now, instead of this hinge riding on the fencing, on the actual post, it's riding on this, this collar here at all. And instead of welding this piece to here, I'm just gonna leave this shank separate so that if this wears out, I can rebuild it and make a new one and just pull it straight out. So we'll weld it solid around there, and then we'll weld it in here. Started snowing on me out here. That'll do. I'm gonna clean it up on the grinder. Get a little bit of the high spots knocked down. Here's our uh, our piece we made. It'll slide up in there like that. Beautiful. All right, you can let go.
have a massive gap here. Size it. <laughs> That's what we don't want. <laughs> so originally, I was going to use a different style hinge that needed four inches between the post and the gate on each side. So that's eight inches on the outsides, and then the middle needed an additional four to five inches. So we have it exactly 32 foot one inch. So there's four inches on each side, no, no, 33 foot one inch. So there's four inches on each side and five in the middle, and then the latch would close perfectly. Well, these only need like two and a half inches on the sides, which adds an additional three inches to the width. So now we've got eight inches in the middle. So, for tonight, I'm not solving that problem, but we are hanging the gate. I'll figure out how to adjust or add or, I don't know. The good thing is it's metal and you can weld the metal. All right, next up, I need to make drop rods for the gates, basically to be able to put them down so that they don't move. So, got this pipe here. We're gonna notch it and make it so that I can make a handle. Something like that. Just like that. Now we got a gap and we'll weld that up. So another thing I'm doing is I'm welding a bolt onto the end of it to cap it. And then I'm doing the same on the bottom. And I found one that just barely fits in there. And then welding all the way around it. Yep. Well, we're not straight. <laughs> Thank you. 
two drop rods, two drop rod holes. Got them mounted to the gates. Painted them with some silver paint that I had just laying around. Way better than the asphalt chunks I was using on either side of the gate. So this will be better. I can chain it up now and lock them. Yeah, that should work great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that quick little project, getting that little wall up and finally putting a gate on the back of the cave. So that's gonna be a big help being able to actually shut the back of the cave. So I have a quick question. Do you guys have any unique ideas for organizing things outside of a shop? Stuff that doesn't matter if it gets wet, it doesn't matter if you know it's outside and gets a little rusty. I'm always looking for ideas like that. So definitely if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. But as always, thank you for supporting Salvage Workshop and watching the videos. All right, Maisie? Come here, girl. Yeah. Well, for Maisie and I here at Salvage Workshop, we truly appreciate your support. You guys, have a great one. Yeah, right there. Oh, that's you like that right there. Oh, yeah. Good girl.